In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. This is an actual photograph of this thing standing there or moving through, okay? And you can see why I wasn't overly jacked up about sharing it on the internet with everybody because look at it. Look at it. That is one messed up what the F is that picture, right? And furthermore, the woman who was in contact, has been in contact, and is in contact with me. She also pointed out that there's three other shadows, I believe. I don't have the photo with me right now as I sit here in the slide. You'll see when I get back and make this video. But uh, there's three other shadows on the ground. Same angle as the shadow behind this, that big ugly thing in the picture. And they're all cruising through in front of the trail camera. Who knows how fast they're moving. So obviously the first things that went through triggered the camera. You can see the shadows and in this side. And uh, that's just one of the shitty things about us all being lied to and misled and not having every all the knowledge of the world shared with us. That's got to be a bummer when you're trying to catch a Bigfoot and you get such a blurry picture and it's supposedly a, an albino Bigfoot. I really couldn't tell what that was in the picture. It definitely looked like a creature of some sort. It was kind of distorted. It's also a shame that if there was three other shadows that they only caught one of the big feet. There could have been potentially two other ones to catch. The theory that Bob Ross paints the landscapes and paints the areas of places where he hit, where he hid bodies. A what? Yeah. Nah. So take this in. So I'm gonna show you a picture. This is one of his most famous paintings ever. Yeah, and Bob Ross is like super innocent too. Yeah, yeah. He looks super innocent. This yeah. painting, it's called Happy Little Accidents. Right? <laughs> yeah. Now this painting uh -huh. is an exact like comparison to this real life place with this tree. Okay. And at this location. They found five dead women, half eaten alive, half eaten, and buried under the tree. Where is this? I think this is in the states somewhere. Who would eat bodies, though? I don't know. That's but 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 keep in mind the title: "Happy Little Accidents." So Happy Bob little. Ross painted it okay. and titled it "Happy Little Accidents." Mm -hmm. Why is that such a sus name? The theory goes mm -hmm. that every single painting that he's done yeah. is a clue. Or at least even the exact location of where he hid these bodies that he's killed. Man, I hope they don't do Bob Ross like that. I used to watch him all the time as a kid. And that would be such a serial killer psychopathic thing to do. They say that they like to collect charms of their victims, but he actually likes to paint the locations of his victims. Let's hope that that's not the case. Any of you guys out there watch Bob Ross in the past? Pretty talented artist. Dragons seem to be hot topics right now. Take a look at this new footage that's coming out of Romania. This was captured by a couple of men who were digging a well on their property. What they find looks like a fossilized dragon skull. Could be a dinosaur or something else. But take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. Vedem, hey. Ia piciorul de bel. I mean, that definitely looks like a skull of some sort. If I was in this situation, I'd be extremely excited. I'd be like, we gotta unearth all of this. I have to see it all. Could you imagine finding something like that? That would be amazing. I can't believe I'm having to say this. What the hell is going on? Yeah, let's just say it's probably a good thing they're finding these other habitable planets because I am out. Talk about wanting to absolutely terrify everybody. The media is now on every single news source saying everybody needs three days of tin food and a survival kit. Well, I'm not even joking. Apparently, we have to stockpile and build a full-on emergency survival kit. Like, what do you mean? Apparently, the things we need are a torch, a battery pack that can be charged by just batteries, and a wind-up sort of radio so we can communicate with people, along with canned food. Like, what's going on that you're not telling me about, boys? Now this of course comes after the whole thing about practicing bunker drills, like what do you mean? What am I meant to do, man? Because apparently it's necessary to practice evacuation and getting to these bunkers, but oh, wait a minute. What's that? 258? Hmm, how many people are there in the UK? Yeah. That's how many bunkers there are in Switzerland, so they're chilling. We're absolutely doomed. Not to mention some people's bunkers in places, they look like this, man. Like, some of these are sick. Of course that's what we've got. I mean, of course it is. Of course it is. But yeah, you've probably seen all these news reports and, you know, all these warnings of stocking up. People are going to the shops and panic buying now, which of course, you know, isn't going to help anyone. This is not good. I'm here to say, don't worry. 
chill out. I highly doubt anything's going to happen anytime soon. So if someone who's worried about the situation to calm them down, and as always, hit that follow button, I will keep you updated. I mean, it's good to at least have the experience and the equipment for the situation, so there's nothing wrong with that, but it's a little odd for the UK to not even have that many bunkers in the first place, especially if they're mandating them to do all of these things, which I do not know if it's true or not. If there's anyone watching in the UK, let me know in the comments if this is actually something that's accurate. People are once again claiming to witness and even posting recordings of what they believe are duendes. For those of you who may not know, duendes are small, gnome-like creatures that are said to live in the walls of homes and out in the forested areas. These beings gained traction after multiple people posted security footage of bipedal-like creatures roaming around their cars and driveways. One video in particular blew up because of how authentic it appeared and how clearly you can see the two legs on this creature. Now most videos that you'd see of duendes, gnomes, or any mystical creature is most likely fake. But one clip in particular piqued my interest when a man claimed to record a duende on live. I want you to check it out and let me know what you think about all this in the comments. This spot. This the spot. Nah, come back out. Hug. Why you be peeking like that? Peek it. Alright, so look, let me know. I'm gonna I'm let this stick. Hey, just let me know if y'all think I should try to be friends with him. Maybe I'll come get you know, some food or something. I have seen that video where the guy was supposedly live filming those little tiny fairy looking creatures in the tree. To me, it kind of looks CGI and it's not hard to fake a live stream. It could have been a pre-recorded video that had been altered to look like a live video. I know some people in the past have been caught doing things like that, but it's a good attempt to prove that there might be fairies out there. We just need a little bit more solid evidence. Do another live where you're answering our questions and things like that. Let me know in the comments if you think that video is fake or not. There's this frequency called IEEE 802.15.6. This wireless network is a short range wireless communications in the vicinity of or inside a human body, but not limited to humans. It uses existing industrial scientific medical bands as well as frequency bands. You can connect to the human body using frequencies that is already out here. Now, if you wanted to take it a step further, people have made the arguments of advanced out algorithms are the reason why you get so much specific targeted ads or maybe your microphone is recording you secret i have reason to believe that these frequency machines are somehow able to <laughs> penetrate your mind to such a degree and it's able to feed you sh based on your thought patterns now that sounds super advanced well it's it's the network itself the iee numbers already affects frequencies can still communicate with your body is it connecting to you like how we connect to wi-fi it's reading the signals from your body in a way i do kind of believe that technology is reading our thoughts even though they say that we do not have that technology yet and they're still developing it i really truly think that it's kind of out there already I know for certain I have been thinking about things not out loud in my head and it would be later on advertised to me. Something totally different than the norm as well. Like the norm for me is looking up different grocery products, dog food, things like that. The things that are out of the norm for me is when I'm thinking about tires for my vehicle. After a certain period of time, I'll start to think about changing the tires on my vehicle. I won't say anything out loud, I'll just be thinking about it on the way to work, on the way home, just in general, after a certain period of time. It's not like I think about changing my tires all the time. But when the time comes and I start thinking about changing my tires, I start seeing advertisements of tires in different brands and where to shop for them. I know that that has to be coming from something reading my thoughts. Let me know in the comments if any of you have experienced anything like that because I experience it quite a bit and I know I have friends that experience it as well. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you so much for being subscribed and thank you so much for watching.
People were writing shit down 36,000 years ago? Both authored these tablets himself. He didn't have a scribe. A lot of the times these god figures or these leaders would have scribes. Right. He actually wrote it down himself. He actually put it onto these these tablets. And these... what is he writing in? What what language? Well, it looked like the language was runes, R-U-N-E-S. And uh, in this text, he writes about coming to this planet after the Great Flood and seeing the temples of wow. ancient Kemet sticking up out of the mud and actually going on a mission to help rebuild civilization. Not that it was for the first time, but he's rebuilding it to a high level. So it was already built, yeah. destroyed. He's like, hey, let's run it back again. Right. His father sends him on a mission. His father says, go to the land of Kem and do the plan that ye know of. So he gets his he gets his crew and he gets into the great ship of the master and he takes off until the planet disappears. Because when he gets over the land of Kem, he goes, I see the land of Kem beneath us. Mm. And I see the temples rising up out of the mud that were flooded by the fountains. Now we come back. Now he comes down to the ground. The fountains he, is the great flood. Right. Got it. Okay. He opens you. the door. He comes out. And he calls these people barbarians coming to attack him, probably Crazy. territorial. Crazy. And he says, I raised my staff and sent out a ray of vibration, stopping them still as fragments and stone of the mountain. So now he's got a stun gun that can freeze them in their tracks. That's mm. fire. That's technology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 now we have so is the spaceship. <laughs> right. yeah, 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 yeah. Here are three ways to tell if someone's energy is not good for you. Number one, whenever you anticipate their presence or when you get a message from them, oftentimes there's this internal shakiness, shivers, if you will. And this will come up when they want to spend time with you or when they're about to come over. You feel this internal chill. Something else that might happen is when you're driving with them, all of a sudden you're making dumb moves. All of a sudden you are not a good driver. If you are having a conversation with them and you're trying to talk to them on an intelligible level, you just can't get your words out. Like for some reason you feel like you have lost all of your brain power. If you're cooking around them, you might mess up a dish that you've made plenty of times. Third thing to notice is after you've spent time with them, you feel way better. Now, this isn't you feel better because you spent time with them. You feel better because you're no longer spending time with them. You're no longer in their presence anymore. It's like their energy was putting you off, but you couldn't really tell if it was them or if it was you. But as soon as you removed yourself from their vicinity, it went away. Now, some people with very dark energy and heavy energy may stick to you, may still linger after you've left. So you have to physically remove it through some sort of rituals, dry brushing, having a shower, smudging yourself and your whole physical space. I haven't really experienced any of those signs of being around someone that might be a bad spirit. The only one that I can sort of relate to, and it might be because I'm introverted, is when I'm hanging around a certain amount of people over time, I do get drained and I feel a lot better when I leave the situation and I have time to recover. But again, I don't necessarily think that that has something to do with them having bad spirits or bad energy. I just think that I'm introverted like that. Does this really to any of you guys watching because I'm curious I've never heard of anyone saying that they couldn't speak around someone that had bad energy or things like that that was, that was a new one to me you'll never guess what just happened a new person has said that they have been past the ice wall and to the continent of Patatia but this time they say that they are someone who was originally from this place and they came past the ice wall to our region and that is because the Asgardians were attacking them and destroying their entire civilization. And he was asking me for help to, I don't know, detonate a bomb or something. Let me show you the messages. Now he told me that there was a submarine planted at Control de Passageros, which I'm guessing is somewhere near the Indian Ocean because that's what's close to the Leviathan's Gate. And so he said the Asgardians are attacking them and destroying the cities, and the Spatatian genocide. He said that he wants me to go to the capital of Asgard, which is on the southeastern side of Patatia. It's called Anweti or something. Uh, I don't want to get involved with this, and I do definitely don't want to be launching any weapons. Now, I've already heard from many other people who have DM'd me 
that Asgard is also attacked as well. It's so strange because there's something with Potatia and Asgard. I'm constantly getting messages about those two specific places and nowhere else on the entire map. So I, I'm wondering what's going on. He actually went into a bit of detail about this entire event that went on. They said that the ships were coming in by the thousands. There was like 40,000 of them in the sky and they dropped bombs on everyone and the soldiers killed people. And, and then his friend came over from the continent of Thoth, which I'll show you on the map later, and picked him up after he got shot in the leg. It was in a coma for the next three months. All right, so here's the message where it says it's on the southeastern coast of Patatia and Weti or whatever. And he's actually in Control de Pasajeros, Argentina, which is where I thought he was. So he actually went through the Sentinel's Gate, which was probably during his three months sail all the way over westward to Thoth. So here's Thoth, the continent that is west of Patatia, and they must have gone through the Sentinel's Gate over to South America, which makes a bit of sense. And then he told me that he was trying to convince the King of Thoth to send his army to help them, and that he got past the ice wall using a low RCS boat, which I don't know what that means, and it was imported from Ireland by a safe haven marine. And he also told me that the North Sentinelese people are all from Libris and Thoth past the ice wall. And if you don't know what they are, they are south of India and they are on that little island. You know, the people that if you come to the island, they'll throw spears at you because they're like not developed at all. Well, apparently that's all a cover up. So people don't know that they're actually from a whole different place. But yeah, what do you guys think? Is this fact? Or fiction. Wow, if that's fake, that's a lot of made up lore from someone, and that's really impressive, and they should probably write a book. I really enjoy the theory that there's other planes of existence outside of the potential ice wall on this planet. I think that that's a really neat concept and theory. And I also like the idea that those islands that have villagers on them go out and attack people because they are pretending to be uncivilized people. And it's just an act to keep people away from the island because on the island that's where all the other people from different worlds across the ice wall live. That's a pretty fun one as well. Let me know what you guys thought of this story. I'm almost 100% sure it's fake, but it's still really cool. Okay, you guys, we need your help. Something is going on here and there is no explanation for this. So this was sent to me by my friend. She has a pinched nerve in her shoulder and she went to the doctor to get an x-ray done and she had to wait for her x-ray results and when she got it, she was flabbergasted and blown away by what she saw. She is literally seeing faces inside of her body, y'all through the x-ray check this out here is one over here and then there's one there and then there's one here we're gonna zoom in so this one right here is literally on her shoulder y'all look at this look at the eyes of this look the two eyes the eye right there eye the nose and then the smile it's like a skeleton smile do you guys see that can you what does it do it looks like it's it looks like it's crouching down it looks like it's crouching down y'all look at that what the Oh my goodness. Here's a closer look. Look at this, y'all. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Okay, now here goes another one. You can clearly see the face. It looks like skeletons, doesn't it? Look. Here's a, here's the other face. This one looks like it's sitting down too. Can y'all see that? Huh? And this face over here. Look, the eyes, the eyes, the nose, and then that smile. It's like a crooked smile. This is all from her x-ray, y'all. Like, can anybody explain? The only thing that I can remember or comes to mind is Osmosis Jones. Y'all remember that? Osmosis Jones, like we have a universe inside of us. And now this is showing through the x-rays. It's crazy what we are seeing now, y'all. Because again, like... I wonder how many other people have come across this stuff. You know what I'm saying? I kind of see the faces in there that he's talking about. They do look a little jackal-like. But honestly, I'm pretty certain that that's just a bunch of distorted imagery. And he's really reaching for seeing a face in there because you have to look really hard to see some of those faces. There is faces for sure. He's definitely seeing them. But I don't know if those are actual faces of different entities or things like that. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. 
On Friday, April 13th, 2029, the Apophis asteroid is going to fly by Earth just over 30,000 kilometers above the surface. This 1,100-foot peanut-shaped rock is the closest approach to Earth from an asteroid that scientists have known about in advance. It flies past us 10 times closer than our moon and even closer than satellites in the geostationary ring. For some perspective, here's what it looks like next to New York City. Luckily, this asteroid's not big enough to be considered a planet killer, but it is large enough to wipe out an entire city. It was once called the most dangerous asteroid known by Earth, which is why it was named after the Egyptian god of chaos. Recent studies conducted in March of this year have said that Apophis's current trajectory puts a collision with Earth in 2029 at 0%. The biggest concern after that was that it might collide with another asteroid, altering its trajectory. So scientists at the University of Waterloo and the University of Western Ontario studied 1.3 million more asteroids in our solar system, determining that there was no possibility of Apophis crashing into another space. It's so mind-boggling to me that we are able to measure the distance of where that asteroid's going to be and at what time that asteroid's going to be, and if there's any other asteroids that are going to make impact with it. Science is really amazing. I really hope that a lot of it's true and it's real science and it's not just a bunch of made up hocus pocus. And for the people that does not believe in space, what do you think it is that we are seeing when that time comes? Do you think that it's some kind of divine being? Do you think it's extraterrestrial? If you're a person that does not believe in space, what do you think that that's going to be when we see it cross? Let me know in the comments, because I'm really interested about that. We have to stop doing dumb stuff on this planet, and I mean dumb. There's abundance for everyone. There's enough for everyone. There's enough land on this planet for everyone. The planet is not overpopulated. Stop listening to the news. There is no overpopulation. It doesn't exist. Our coastal areas overpopulated only because of our construction technique. If you had a different type of construction technique, a green type of construction like the Venus Project, that would not even feel overcrowded. But more in all the inland areas across this vast planet, and this this planet is huge. It took me 38 hours to fly to Cambodia. Imagine that. Imagine flying for 38 hours to get to a location. There's so much land. There's so much guaranteed abundance here. And they got people living on tiny swaths of land, fighting over resources as if there's nothing left and there's nowhere else to go. That's power, control, and domination. That's what that is. By a small group of people that want to sit on top of the pyramid and look down on everybody, everyone and keep their bellies fat. I have never heard of the Venus Project before. I'll have to look into that and see what that is all about. And I agree. I really think that there's enough land on this world to support everyone comfortably. I'm not 100% sure about that fact, but it just seems like we really do. I want you guys to know about a 6,000-year-old secret. 6,000 years, mankind has been trying to decipher this one little thing called the flower of life. Now do you know the flower of life? Have you guys ever seen this before? Now you know this is one of the oldest symbols in um, human history, right? Or do you not know? This symbol was found in the Temple of Osiris in Egypt, and it had been molecularly burned into the wall. And it's 6,000 years old. This, this same symbol has been found in the, the forbidden temples in China, sitting under the fufu dogs, and the foot on it, the flower of life, saying whoever controlled that flower of life controlled the universe. There were secrets in that flower of life that da Vinci spent his whole life trying to uncover. There were secrets in that flower of life that Newton spent his whole life in secret trying to uncover. The same secrets that Pythagoras was desperately trying to uncover. But the problem was, they kept seeing this in a two-dimensional space. They couldn't get it out of this two-dimensional frame, and as a result, they got stuck in this plane, a flat plane. Now, what da Vinci and all of them wanted to do 
they were trying to find a way to bring this flower to life because what is inside of it? Well, apparently, there were secrets inside of it. Shapes, they got the macarba and all of those other things out of it. But they were misled by something I think called a straight line. This guy, he found some treasure in 1988. He figured out where this shipwreck was, and the ship was called the Ship of Gold. Wow. They went there, and they found a lot of gold. <laughs> and he sold the gold and made $52 million. Whoa! And then here comes the U.S. government. They, going to tax you. <laughs> they sent him an audit, and they said, we just need to know how much gold yeah. you have. And he said, no, I don't have to tell you. Yeah. And they're like, all right, jail. you're going to jail. No way! They put him in jail. His sentence was two years, contingent on telling them, one, how much gold he had, and two, where's the shipwreck? Why? After the two years, Bro. he goes, I don't remember. Yeah. Oh, forget. And they're like, okay. Don't say it. I mean, he's been there for seven years now. Bro. Yeah. And so they're holding him indefinitely. They don't have his money, though, right? Well, I don't know. say your bitter is showing. But I think it makes more sense that there's something on there that the U.S. really want, and he's just like, it would be too dangerous if the government had their hands on it. Yeah. <sighs> so I will stay in prison. Noble. It's KFC's recipe. I will stay in prison? No. Oh. The recipe that's on the boat. That's what was on the boat. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. I don't know if I necessarily believe that there's something that the government wants that's on that boat. I just think that they want the treasure. They want all the gold. Helps pay off their debt. <laughs> And they are just really upset that this guy won't share that information. And he's walking away with $50 million worth of gold. It's a shame, though, that they're putting him in jail because he won't share that information. It's kind of like a game of finder keepers. As far as I know, there was no bounty set out on finding this boat in the gold by the government, you know? So it's kind of just like a you find it, you claim it type of deal. Or maybe you're supposed to actually turn that stuff in. I'm not 100% sure. Let me know in the comments. If you find treasure and stuff like that in the ocean, do you have to turn that in or can you claim it? I'm actually kind of curious about that. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.